Today, we will learn about one simple type of association study, a candidate gene association study. As I mentioned last week, one of the main research areas in modern human genetics is to identify genes that contribute or influence a complex trait. With each of these techniques, the general idea is to look for co-segregation of a specific marker or mutation with the affected phenotype. Linkage analysis does this in pedigrees. Association studies does this in the total population. The idea of a candidate gene study is to focus on one particular candidate gene that might contribute to a complex trait. Then, one calculates the association of a mutation or marker tightly linked to that candidate gene with some affected phenotype in the population. For example, do people with a disease phenotype disproportionately possess the mutant allele or some mutant allele in the candidate gene? First, I want to clarify the distinction between a potentially causal mutation in the candidate gene and a genetic marker such as such as a SNP marker that is tightly linked to the candidate gene. The former represents a direct association since the mutation is presumably causing the phenotype. The latter represents an indirect association where you have markers that are tightly linked to the candidate gene and the causal mutation. A key point to make is that in an association test whether there is direct or indirect association doesn't matter as long as in the indirect case the marker is in linkage disequilibrium with the causal mutation. Linkage disequilibrium means that two alleles located near each other on a chromosome are inherited together more frequently than would be expected by chance. <clears throat> For example, if alleles 1 and 2 are equally frequent, so alleles 1 and 2 for this SNP marker are equally frequent in the population, but, alle but only allele 1 is always associated, always on the same chromosome, with the causal mutation in some gene X. This represents linkage disequilibrium, and now allele 1 is a good proxy for the causal mutation in the population even though it's not the actual mutation. The closer two loci are together, i.e. the more tightly linked they are, the greater the chance they are in linkage disequilibrium. As an aside, we didn't need linkage disequilibrium in linkage analysis, which we covered last week, because it takes many genera generations and many matings for all the alleles of two tightly linked loci to equilibrate and become randomly associated in a population. And so for the few generations and matings in a pedigree, specific alleles at one loci should remain on the same chromosome as specific alleles at the other loci, as long as the loci are tightly linked. An association study is a case control study. You gather together the case group, which are the people showing the affected phenotype, and then you gather together a second control group that does not show the phenotype. So there are two groups. So you have two phenotypes, affected and normal, and two genotypes, heterozygotes containing one mutant allele and one wild-type allele, and homozygotes with both wild-type alleles. By genotyping your case affected group and genotyping your control normal group, you can fill this two-by-two two contingency table. From this table, you can calculate the odds ratio, see slide 14 of lecture 10, which should be greater than 1 if the candidate gene is, contributes to the phenotype. You can also use the chi-squared test to see if there's a statistically significant association of the mutant allele with the affected phenotype. Let's go through an example. Here's a paper studying autism in which the authors have focused on the candidate gene HOXB1. They have assembled a case group of people with autism and a control group without autism. Sequencing the HOXB1 gene in some of the case group revealed some polymorphisms that potentially could be causal mutations. Remember, whether the mutation is actually causal or not causal and merely tightly linked to the real causal mutation doesn't matter if there is linkage disequilibrium. One such mutation is called INS. It comes in two alleles. 
INS and NINS. The authors genotype their two groups for this mutation. Here, let's focus on the data in this red square. We have the heterozygous NINS slash INS and the homozygous NINS NINS. We'll ignore this group, the INS slash INS, because they are so infrequent. The INS, the INS allele is considered to be the causal mutation. We will perform a chi-squared test to see if these heterozygotes here are significantly associated with autism. As a reminder, a chi-squared test determines whether there is a significant difference between the expected frequencies and the observed frequencies in one or more categories. It is, it is the sum of the observed number minus the expected number squared over the expected number, and this is summed over every entry in the table. The expected number is calculated from the proportion of each genotype and phenotype. After calculating the chi-squared value, you can determine the p-value by looking up a table. Or you can just do this whole calculation using Microsoft Excel, which is what we are going to do. Remember, a p-value indicates the probability of the null hypothesis that the values in the contingency table could have arisen by chance. A p-value of less than 0.05 means that we can reject this null hypothesis, indicating that there is a statistically significant association. The Excel spreadsheet is available on Goucher Space to download. Here, and so I'm going to go through this process. So first, let's go to Goucher Space, and we can see the chi-squared calculation spreadsheet, and we can download it. And now let's look at the spreadsheet. Here we have the data from the table of the paper placed into the spreadsheet. Here are the genotypes and the case and control. The spreadsheet automatically will calculate the expected values uh, for the table from the relative frequencies of the genotypes and phenotypes. Then it will calculate the chi-squared value and the p-value from this chi-squared value with one degree of freedom. Finally, it calculates the odds ratio, which is greater than 1. In this case, as the authors note, the association is not statistically significant. The p-value is greater than 0.05. For the assignment, I want you to copy this spreadsheet. And the way you do that is by going under Edit, then Move or Copy Sheet, and create. you want to create a copy, so check that and then press OK, and then you've copied it over here. And now what I want you to do um, for the assignment, and I'll talk more about it on the next slide, is first change the labels. So for example, for the genotype, you have to change these labels to correspond to the alleles that, uh, for the candidate gene that you're going to work with. And then you're going to input hypothetical data. And as you input the hypothetical data, you'll see that all these numbers are going to change and you're going to be calculate a new chi-squared and a p-value and odds ratio. So the spreadsheet will automatically calculate everything else. So in summary of a candidate gene association study, the first thing you do is you pick a candidate gene that you may think influences your complex trait. You identify a marker or causal mutation in the candidate gene, and the marker would be tightly linked to the candidate gene. You collect a group, a case group of affecteds and a control group of non-affecteds. You genotype both groups for your marker slash mutation, and you place that data in a two by two genotype affinity type contingency table. And then the Excel spreadsheet will help you calculate the statistical significance of, the, of any association by the chi-square test and will also calculate the odds ratio. So assignment 13b is to perform a candidate gene association study. 
So I want you to pick a candidate gene, and it can be one of the genes that you have previously described in questions 4, 7, or 8 of the term paper. Identify or hypothesize a causal mutation, which is basically the exercise in question 8 of the term paper. Imagine that you have collected a case group and a control group and genotype them for your mutation. Fill in a 2x2 two two genotype by phenotype contingency table using the Excel spreadsheet, um, just as I described, where you copy uh, the sheet that we worked on, for example. Calculate, which means the spreadsheet will calculate the chi-squared value, p-value, and odds ratio for your hypothetical data. Then upload the modified Excel spreadsheet to Google Drive and share it with me. And finally, describe what you just did under question 10 of the term paper. Finally, I just want to remind you of assignment 13A, which is to construct a master diagram of your system and complex trait. And this also is due on Tuesday, at least a draft of it.